Yes. Uh, one can view the universities as in, in some ways when you compare them to all other state agencies in a somewhat advantaged position because when the state general fund drops during a recession, they can raise fees and given that fees are comparatively low across the country, they can raise them and still students still are going to line up and consider it a rather good deal to be able to access the education. Such that when the segments were seen cuts in the state general fund, they were to some degree offset with tuition increases. In addition, if they were financially needy students, they were insulated. They weren't paying the fee increase that was being covered by the state in the form of Cal Grants. During the recession, tuition and Cal Grants more than doubled. So it was more of a distributional impact on those folks who weren't qualifying for aid were paying the, the price. From the institution's perspective, they were a bit better off than some other agencies because they had this alternative revenue to draw on. When we looked at UC and you put their student, their state general fund and their student tuition revenue together and you compare 7, 8 with 14, 15, it's down as I recall 5%. So it is still down in per student terms. But we also looked at it somewhat differently because UC can access some private money and other sources of support, which they did increasingly during the recession. So when you take a somewhat different perspective on how much they spent per student, they were spending a little bit more in 14-15 than in 7-8. It's sort of an indication of the health of the system. They were able to maintain their program, actually spent a little bit more per student post-recession than during uh, the pre-recession years. But isn't the issue they were making is when they increase student fees, it's not like they're just getting the revenue from the student. They're getting the revenue from the state of California. If you look at the, at the staff report that the student financial aid allocation 08 was 295, 295 million and then 16, 15, 16, 938 million. So the amount of money going from the general fund to the segment, whether it's the direct appropriation to the University of California or kind of backdoor via the Student Aid Commission and what they get reimbursed for their student tuition is, has been increasing over those years. Yes, and, and we'd be happy to work with you because when we do our share of cost numbers, we do count Cal Grants, and I think that we do it without double counting. There's clearly a way that it can be done. So we'd be happy to work with you to make sure you're getting just the slice of information that you want. Mr. Ting? I was just going to, if, if you could also add the middle class scholarship into that calculation, that'd be sure. great sure. as well. Sure. Why don't we connect with your staff just to make sure we're getting you what you want? Very good. Thank you. And to the extent that finance wants to participate in this, my understanding is this chart is, is your chart. Sure. And so this chart does not double count it. So what we did was we looked at their total uh, tuition and fees and we said what portion of that amount is um, is being paid for through the Cal Grant and through the middle class scholarship program. So that line that says state financial aid is the uh, isn't double counting the tuition revenues. And it's a hard you know, to your initial point. It's a hard counterfactual to think through. But but one might make an argument that the university would have been more reluctant to raise tuition and uh, raise tuition levels had the state not uh, m continued to make a commitment to support the Cal Grant program. And so I think. You know, it's a, uh, you know, the argument that we made in the governor's budget is that this is an important part to, uh, of the university's uh, total resources to look at. Okay. Thank you. We will now go to the uh, public comment section. And if everyone could line up there in the uh, middle. And we're going to impose a uh, limit per speaker of how much? Do you want me here at the table? Okay, no more than one minute per oh. speaker, okay. please. Okay, right. Thank you. Let me breathe. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Heron. I, uh, I'm here as the Associated Students President from Chico State and speaking on behalf of the California State Student Association and the almost half a million students in the CSU. Uh, I'll speak as a student, as uh, the person who's paying the other half of my tuition as a customer of the system. Uh, my job has afforded me a lot of opportunities to be in the rooms uh, where people are making decisions on campus in regards to money and budget. And I can stand in front of you and tell you today that um, I'm satisfied and much more. Uh, the leadership for at the CSU and the entire California higher public education system is good stewards of the dollars. And uh, I'm here today to ask you for more support. 
we talk about education as uh, really the key to addressing all of the other issues that the state of California is facing. And as we look forward into the next couple of years, I just want to recognize people like Chancellor White and Assemblymember Chavez who see education as the key to addressing those issues. Uh, the other person I wanted to recognize was um, Assemblymember Brown who came in earlier and she was talking about uh, a comment that a student had made and uh, we're back from about a week's worth of advocating. We were one in Washington DC for about a week, the CSU and then we're here today. We had a couple hundred students out um, and we're here because we believe in the system and we believe in the CSU and it's not only mobilized us to be here but we really really hope that you can see that value too. And so with Thank that I ask you to be an ally and increase funding for the CSU and the entire system. Thank you. Thank you. Go Wildcats. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Darlene Yi Melikar. I'm a professor of gerontology at San Francisco State University, where I'm active on the Campus Senate as well as the CSU Academic Senate. Thanks for your attention and consideration of what I have to say as I try to represent the 24,000 faculty in the CSU. What we wish to do is to impress upon you the significance of investing in our current and future students and setting them up for success in the CSU. To accomplish this, the CSU needs your help to ensure an adequate and sustainable bu support budget so that we may aspire to do several things. First, increase new student enrollment growth from 1 to 3 percent, hire additional faculty to meet new student enrollment needs. Three, schedule more classes that they need to expedite time to complete degrees. Fourth, to provide academic facilities to accommodate these course augmentations and engage learning. And lastly, to graduate more students who will enhance our state's workforce in meaningful ways. That's it. It's all about our students. We look forward to your leadership to facilitating the CSU budget requests for leveraging student success. Thank, thank you. you for listening today and thank you for your work in the coming months. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair and members, my name is Kevin Weir. I'm a Sacramento State faculty member. I've been the chapter president at Sacramento State for the California Faculty Association, we represent the 25,000 faculty, librarians, and coaches of the CSU. Although we have our differences, we agree with the chancellor and the legislature that an additional 100 million is appropriate at this stage for an incremental reinvestment of the people's university. Nevertheless, there are some serious issues at the CSU, and I'm glad that this committee, with your leadership, Mr. Chair, is taking a closer look at the system's funding and priorities. I've been teaching at the CSU since 2003, and I've seen the divestment from core aspects of instruction. For example, many of my students are now taking classes in extended education, which is more costly, but seems to be the only way for them to get the classes they need in order to one day graduate. This means, members, that we are in fact creating a two-tiered system in which the students who can afford to pay more will have greater opportunities to take the classes they need. Those same students will also have less chance to take classes with tenure-track professors and more chance to be taught by lecturers. Our union represents both lecturers and tenure-line professors, and both are skilled and highly qualified. Unfortunately, the low pay and employment instability faced by most lecturer faculty is not good for our students. Many lecturers must work multiple jobs or teach at multiple campuses uh, just to make ends meet. Turnover among lecturer faculty is high as they understandably search for secure teaching positions. Students need a stable teaching workforce to achieve success. The university speaks about its need for flexibility and certainly both the reduction in tenure track professors and the push for more students in extended education as well as the higher taxation of students through student fees and the stagnant wages for the folks providing the instruction have been indicative of the university's direction and priorities. Can you wrap it up, Mr. Ware? Yes, I'm almost done. This is what flexibility has brought us, a lower tenure track to lecturer ratio, a de facto two-tier system, devaluation of the professoriate, and all without significant increase in the graduation rate. We believe that in the past, this legislature has stood up for the CSU and sent clear indications to management with uh, an example being ACR 73 back in 2001. And we look forward to working with you uh, to improve the CSU in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder so we can get through everybody. I'm going to try to keep it to one minute or less. My name is Lois Bulgaridis. <laughs> My name is Lois Bulgarides. I am a lecturer at California State University, Sacramento. Um, I've taught at uh, California State uh, Sacramento for 18 years. And in those 18 years, the changes I've seen are unmistakable. Uh, faculty are doing more and more with less and less. 
Uh, my colleagues are teaching and advising more students without additional compensation. Students still struggle to graduate in a timely way and are squeezed out of classes, even as their tuition and debt continues to increase. Funding still has not taken the CSU to a sustainable level, though we serve more and more students. And it was heartening to, um, to hear your comments earlier today. Thank you for that. Um, additional funding is crucial to providing a high quality and affordable education for the people of California. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jennifer Baker with the California Teachers Association. I'll try to keep it extremely brief. I did want to focus on a few key issues of accountability within the community college system. We believe it's very important if we're going to try to increase the amount of full-time faculty members that we have, that we make sure that we set achievable goals and that we ensure that those goals are achieved. So we don't want to have a partial increase of full-time faculty. We want to have measurable numbers and see increases all across the board and across the state because we believe that there's a direct link and correlation to student success. We also believe that part-time office hours are actually critical to student success because when you look at the number of community college students and look at the diversity of those students and you look at the fact that the majority of faculty that those students are taking their courses with, um, that the majority of faculty are not all full-time faculty, if those full-time, if those part-time faculty members don't have office hours, that means that our community college students do not have access to the instructors that they're taking. If they don't have access to the instructors, how are we going to ensure that we can achieve student success? So we would like to have a broader conversation about what does student success mean and make sure that the faculty that are the boots on the ground members working on these issues have the tools and the support they need to be effective at the work that they're doing. And then additionally, we'd like to encourage you to broaden the conversation about student success to ensure that we're having a conversation with our K-12 colleagues around college readiness to make sure that our community colleges are particularly ready for the discussions about college readiness and that we're ready for students that are going to be coming into the community college system um, that have come through the Common Core system in K-12. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a, Mr. Chair, I have a, the president of Sac State in my office right now, so I'm going to have to go. Tell President Gonzalez hello. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So again, I just want to accommodate everybody and uh, one minute or less. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Burhau. I'm Vice President of Workforce Development and Advocacy for the Orange County Business Council. Our organization represents 250 of the largest and most innovative employers in America, and I'm here today to respectfully request the committee's consideration to fully fund Cal State University in 2015-2016. Cal State University Fullerton is a key industry partner of OCBC, working with us to advance our four key initiatives, workforce development, workforce housing, infrastructure, and economic development. This partnership between Cal State University and our business members has been essential to Orange County's economic success by promoting livable communities and preparing a diverse, talented workforce. Highly skilled positions in manufacturing, healthcare, and IT, and other areas now typically require a post-secondary education. In response, Cal State University has become, a proactive, has become proactive to the needs of the business community as it has evolved. Cal State University continues to work with businesses to align their curriculum. Orange County, for example, houses the most medical device companies in the world, and the university is working with those businesses to create a pipeline from post-secondary degree to highly skilled, skilled jobs in our region. Having a state-of-the-art institution like Cal State University allows our local students to obtain a great education and fulfills the business community's goal of retaining a young, talented workforce to live, work, and stay in California. Employers in Orange County are looking for highly trained and qualified workers and entrepreneurs like those coming from Cal State University. To begin addressing the need for an additional 1 million degrees in the coming decades, Orange County Business Council respectfully requests that you adopt full funding for Cal State, Fuller Thank you. Cal State Fullerton. Thank you. Hello, my name is Harley Litzma. I'm Director of Advocacy for the UC Davis Student Government. In January, the UC Student Association passed a resolution expressing no confidence in the Regents and the President of the University of California. However, I would like to present an opportunity to regain that confidence. Uh, following her comments at USC, um, William Tierney, a co-director of Polyes Center, and William Kiefer, a professor of higher education at USC, said that President Napolitano is trying to forge a conversation with California citizens about what kind of state we want. I pres we present an opportunity to do so. The Associated Students of UC Davis have 
I invited both President Napolitano and Governor Brown to take part in an open discussion at the Robert, Mon Robert and Margaret Mondavi Center for the Performing Arts at UC Davis in the coming months. Uh, this has been fully approved and funded by our administration, and everyone here is invited. Um, this, uh, this discussion about public higher education has a place in the public sphere, and we believe that if we had the support of everyone in this room, every uh, every co constituent um, interest here, that we would be able to um, behoove the president and the governor to take part in this discussion, because it belongs to something more than the committee of two, but to a public stage. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan McElhaney with the Community College League of California, representing California's 72 community, community college districts. And we wanted to thank you for this conversation today and just remind you about the diverse cost pressures our, our community colleges will be facing over the next 10 years. Uh, things like a nearly doubling of the STIRS per employee contribution increase, uh, a complete lack of state uh, f um, support for a capital outlay need of $35 billion, and the lack of ch purchasing power that we lost, uh, that Chancellor Harris um, alluded to earlier. And we wanted to remind you that our 72 districts, making up of uh, 112 colleges, are in far northern California and far southern California, and uh, their cost pressures are all very different. And so if you could keep that in mind and try to keep um, your dollars going to these colleges as flexible as possible to hit those uh, expenses. So thank, thank you. you.